Hello, everybody on Facebook. How are you doing today? Um, I'm here in Georgia, and it's a little overcast and a little cool, but no precipitation. So that always makes me happy when it's not raining and cold, right? But it is winter, so it is realistic to have the precipitation and the cold, right? So I'm Paula Nowak. I am coming to you from my home office, but I'm with Canine Country Academy, and I thought it would be helpful from now until the end of the year to have a daily tip to keep your dogs out of trouble. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when it gets cold outside and it gets dark really early, um, it's really hard to get my dogs out to exercise them or socialize them. Or honestly, you know, classes are dying down for the end of the year um, because of the holidays and they're just not getting out as much, which means I'm a little lazy and that can mean they're a little bored and that can create problems. So if you struggle with getting your dog physical or mental stimulation during the winter months because of the holidays or just because it gets dark and cold, make sure to give this post a thumbs up. And if you want other people to learn about these tips, be sure to share this live feed now or in the future. So these tips, I'll keep some of them brief, but others will be more in a tutorial fashion to show you how to actually do the thing I'm recommending. And I would love your feedback on these or if you have additional questions regarding what we're talking about. So tune in every day at four o'clock Eastern time to get the tip. So today's tip is going to talk about mental stimulation. Now, mental stimulation is really important. It's something that most people lack when they're um, having problems with their dogs. Mental stimulation can be a variety of things, and I've got so many ideas on how you can use mental stimulation to reduce any kind of problem behaviors. Now, what would be a problem behavior this season? I'm getting a lot of reports of things like all of a sudden the dog is starting to be maybe a little more resource guarding um, of things. You know, maybe their possessions from other dogs or they're just a little more cranky. Those are things that might not be directly related to um, lack of physical or mental stimulation. That might be related to the cold weather and maybe they're a little arthritic. But that could also be because they're bored, they need something to do. Certain breeds, like herding breeds, tend to be a little more um, a pain because their job is taken away. They can't go do the thing they're supposed to do when it gets cold. So what are the other things that are going on? Uh, you might have a dog who is more barky, who is just more fussy, they won't settle. Maybe they're chewing on things that they shouldn't. Maybe they're annoying a sibling uh, that lives in the home with them. Um, you know, they might be soiling in the house more often just because maybe they don't wanna get outside either because it's gross. So there's a lot of drama that happens in the winter because lifestyle changes and that changes for us as well as for them. So the tip I want to share with you all today is in regards to mental stimulation. And like I said, there is a variety of ways you can stimulate your dog's brain. Um, but what we're gonna talk about today is ways you can use food and feeding times or snack times. Now, if you're doing feeding times, this is pretty easy because most people feed their dog one, two, or three times a day. So you have multiple opportunities to utilize these enrichment techniques. So some things you might want to use are, you know, interactive toys like our Outward Hound feeder. Um, you put food in here, whether it's kibble or wet food, or even um, if you feed raw, you can put some raw food in here as well. They're very easy to clean. Just put them upside down in the dishwasher or hand wash them, and uh, that's very easy to use. I also have a Kong Wobbler here. These are nice because they come in two different sizes. There's a large one and then this is a small one. And it is weighted with sand at the bottom. I don't think this thing has anything in it, hopefully not. <laughs> um, it's weighted at the bottom, so it's harder for them to tip. And then you put the food in and then you put the top on, put it together and then they can push it around. Kind of like those punching bags that little kids might have. They push it around. To make it easier, what you might want to do is just 
leave the bottom off and let them push this top part around, or maybe if they're sensitive to things like this, to make it super easy, maybe put a couple pieces of kibble. But once they're skilled at this, this is more challenging for uh, most dogs because it's heavier and they have to use their paws, is um, you can you know fill their whole meal up in here. And this would be ideal for your kibble or um, any kind of dry treats that you wanna cut up. So this is another option to use for mental stimulation. Another one that I don't use too often, um, honestly, I can't think of the last time I used this, is this little squirrel buddy dude. Let me see if I can get that on there for you. It's kind of fun looking. <laughs> it's not super focused, but uh, it has a hole at the top so that your dog doesn't get suction cupped in here. And then you can put some food in here. Anytime you're starting with toys like this, make sure it's really easy for them so they're winning, uh, especially for dogs who get more frustrated. And that way they're winning, they know how to use it. If this was too challenging with the, here, let's see if I can show you, with those little teeth in there, maybe you can even cut one or two out so it's easier, especially if your dog tends to get frustrated or maybe puzzles aren't easy for them. And then another thing I have, and there's so many of these, this is just what could fit on my desk, um, is the green feeder. Woo, the green feeder. This is also uh, dishwasher safe. Um, it comes in two different sizes, but really, size does not matter when it comes to the green feeder because um, it might matter how much food you can put in at once, but otherwise, it's not really that challenging if it's the small one or the big one. It wouldn't be great for dogs who have a smush face or a brachycephalic face because it's hard for them to get in there. Um, but Try some of these things out. Now, for those of you who are like, yeah, we've already done interactive feeders. Um, they're really easy. My dogs get through them really fast. Well, step it up. So depending on what kind of feeder you have, you have a couple different options. For feeders like this, what you could do is take a little bit of dry food and hydrate it, uh, make it a little bit moist, or you could take a little bit of wet food and put it in here and then freeze it for 30 minutes to an hour so it's not frozen, frozen. Um, you could go all that way if you wanted to, um, but it makes it more challenging. So don't do 100% of their meal frozen in one of these. Do a little bit so that after they finish the top portion of whatever you put inside, then they have more to work on. Just always supervise because these things are not meant to be chewed on. We don't want your nice um, interactive feeders to get chewed on. What you can also do is take these feeders and separate your dogs if you have multiple dogs and hide them around the house. So all you have to do is, you know, take their portion of their meal and split it up among two, three or more puzzles and then hide them around the house. So now they have to go and find the puzzle and then work the puzzle. And then once they work that puzzle, then they move on to another. When you're starting out, you might want to do this where they can actually see the puzzles and then make it more challenging where they can't see it. Maybe it's behind the couch and now it's, you know, under something else. You know, maybe it's under a table or an ottoman and they have to really work it out. Always make it so they can be successful, um, but, you know, challenge them a little bit too. So what kind of interactive feeders do you guys have? Do you have interactive feeders? This is something that everybody should probably have one or two so you can rotate them. If you have multiple dogs, that works out nice because they each have something different to work on. Um, but use these in a way to combat any kind of trouble behavior. If their mind is busy on what you want them to do, it can't be busy on jobs they create. And we don't want this winter and this season to be a pain for you because your dog is bored out of their mind and you're super busy. If you have to feed them, you don't just sit there and watch them eat this unless there's, you know, access to another dog, um, but give them something to do while they have to eat, and then you can move on with what you need to do. Make phone calls, check emails, and they'll be perfectly happy. So do you guys have any questions about using interactive feeders to ward off any trouble behaviors? All right, so Hannah's got a comment here that wobblers can be a lot harder if you don't fill them enough too. Yeah, as soon as they get to the lower level, they can get really frustrated. So make sure it's full. And then if your dog does start getting really frustrated, go ahead and open it. Maybe you ask them to do a behavior and then you open it up for them. You use your magic thumbs that they don't have. Um, that makes me think of something else. You know, you could um, have your dog work on learning to sit or down or do a trick and wait before you set this interactive puzzle down that might be different for them than doing it for their food bowl. Sorry, my camera seems to be bouncing around. 
Um, hopefully I'm not making you guys nauseous with this. So if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to post them in the comments. I'll be checking in. But tomorrow we're going to talk more about warding off any trouble behaviors this season at four o'clock Eastern time. And if you have any questions, that'll help me uh, know what to offer each day. This will be Monday through Friday that you'll get these tips. And uh, I look forward to checking in with you guys every day until the end of the year. Thanks so much for watching. If you need any training assistance, whether it's training or behavior, we are here for you. We have an amazing team that offers a variety of classes and private lessons and day training. And we look forward to seeing you guys soon in the new year if we don't see you sooner. Bye, guys.